Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me in another video. I recently did a video talking about New York Fashion Week. I've had a few requests to talk about fashion content. I appreciate you guys when you let me know what you want to see from me. It gives me sort of a general idea of what you guys like. So I thought we would continue talking about Fashion Week, specifically London Fashion Week. I think it's a real opportunity to talk about newer designers or designers you may not have heard of. And I would love to know personally, are there any designers from London Fashion Week or from New York Fashion Week that that have piqued your interest, please let me know in the comments. The first brand I wanna talk about is actually a brand I've talked about in the past before, and this was their second runway collection that we've seen them come out with. And I'm talking about the brand Tove. I hope I'm saying that right. But to me, this is that perfect blend of that minimal aesthetic that we are seeing, but also something that is equally romantic and feminine at the same time. I feel often with brands that sort of veer on the minimal side of fashion, when we think about the Roe or Jill Sander or Peter Doe, there's often a heavy focus on tailoring, which I totally love and appreciate. And I think it really works really well in the spirit of say 90s minimalism. And this brand definitely does this, but they also do such lovely dresses with these really soft romantic details. It's very feminine, but the core minimalist design principles are still there. It feels fresh, it's modern, it's clean, it's ageless. If you like a brand like Kate or Celine, I think you would like this brand. There are those soft romantic touches, really lovely tops, but it's nice to see minimalist dresses, which I have been seeing recently from a lot of these minimalist brands. Usually it might just be like a slip dress. There's a little bit more interest with some of these pieces. This brand is about creating pieces that you can just add to create a beautiful wardrobe. They never really focus on the trends. One of my favorite looks was honestly this look with a sweater and styled in an asymmetric way. But then you have this lovely feather dress and then it looks like these mules. To me, this looks like something that like a Jenna Lyons would wear, something over the top but like also very casual at the same time. I would love to see more of that with a lot of these minimalist brands because there is an opportunity for things to look very feminine. And I think just this strictness around sartorial fashion, while I love a sartorial look, there is this more feminine minimal side that could be explored and I think this brand is doing this really really well. So the next designer I want to talk about is a very new emerging designer. His name is Aaron Ash. He's a London based fashion designer who was named one of the finalists for the LVMH prize for the Young Fashion Designer Award. But when I look at this collection I definitely feel there's something very youthful, very young, very fresh, but also at the same time very quiet. There is this lean into this more minimal minimal aesthetic. To me, I find it quite fascinating how younger emerging designers are leaning into something that a lot of people would consider the Brunello Cuccinelli's, the Laurel Piana, like that sort of aesthetic, even the row, there's sort of more mature look that is often associated. But to me, this feels very young. Seeing this young energy embrace a more minimal palette actually totally does make sense. But I feel like when it's come to this minimal or quiet luxury, however you want to say it, it's often been something that is a little bit more mature. For instance, I really like this asymmetric look with this warped vest and the core pieces are more minimal but because they're like asymmetric and just the cut and like the way it's styled it feels a little bit younger a little bit more fresher there is that sort of experimental youthful edge that is there the show definitely had a very minimal neutral color palette things like the sunglasses and the shoes while you look at some of these pieces there's like a classicness and an elegance to them when you look at the shoes and you look at the sunglasses it kind of throws things off to me i don't know why just all i see is balenciaga and like that look when I see these sunglasses, but I think the shoes are super interesting. I think the cuts are cool. So the next designer I want to talk about, when I saw this collection from Paolo Carzana, I felt I was more looking at just beautiful sculptures. I know sometimes when we think about fashion, and often when I think about fashion, just to be totally real, I like to know that there's clothes I can wear and get on with my day. That is very appealing to me, but I do get a lot of joy when I see a designer just make something that is totally impractical, but also very tactile and sculptural. It feels very human. The handmade touch about these garments I really quite liked especially when like we're talking about things like AI and technology and the advancement of that and I do think there is something to be said about the human touch how he dyed these garments himself most of this is very unwearable there's something very crude and raw but also very beautiful at the same time it's very unprocessed very untreated but you can feel the human touch to me when I look at this collection this isn't what's trending what's hot what's hype whatever but I just want to talk about it because when I see a designer making something 
something just from pure creativity. It's something we don't really see that much. And we're always talking about like the business side and like the financials and is this brand going to be a commercial success? Sometimes it's just nice to look at just the act of being creative. And I just want to highlight this collection just because I thought it was nice to see. And the next designer I want to talk about, continuing on sort of like a more sculptural, three-dimensional approach to fashion, is a designer that I think has been gaining a lot of traction recently. And I'm talking about Simone Rocha. I personally really like this approach to three-dimensional florals, but I think there's something so authentically her about when she does these three-dimensional florals. When I see this collection, the show was called The Dress Rehearsal. It was held at the English National Ballet headquarters. We saw these beautiful bouquets of pearls, these bouquets that look like they were clutches, so these like pearl cakes. Felt very Marie Antoinette, the Rococo-ness of this. I feel like metallics are having a really strong moment. Just these like ballet wedges really reminded me of something that Dita Von Teese would have worn in the mid to late 2000s by like a Jean-Paul Gaultier or like a Vivian Westwood or something. That was the kind of stuff I just loved back in the day. Still love it now. She kind of reminds me just because she's taking references from Rococo, but then she's also fusing utility and like sportswear and things that are very utilitarian at the same time. It's just this like interesting juxtaposition that you wouldn't ever think of, but she blends it in such a beautiful way. And something that is very exciting to me that I'm gonna be looking forward to is she's gonna be taking over Jean-Paul Gaultier runway. So this collection is scheduled to be released January, 2024. I'm very curious to see what she's gonna reference from the archives. So finally, we're gonna talk about Burberry. I think Daniel Lee, he's found his stride here. I felt there were a lot of things that were reminiscent of the Celine Spring Summer 2018 collection. I don't know if it was like the color palette, the styling, maybe it was like the tent setting. That Spring Summer 2018 collection was very trench coat heavy, but in slightly deconstructed ways. But at the same time, there was nothing really obviously a reference. One look that really reminded me of the Spring Summer 2018 collection was this look with the fringe dress and then the trench coat, just kind of like the styling of that. That was the collection we saw the pouch. I'm convinced Daniel Lee had a very heavy hand on this collection at Celine. And I definitely think he's bringing on a lot of these signatures, the pouch, the interesting shoes that he brought up Bottega to Burberry. We'll see if that customer base follows him here as well. There was definitely a reason why Daniel Lee at Bottega, a lot of Celine customers blocked there immediately when Phoebe Philo left Celine. At the same time, he wasn't just rehashing Phoebe Philo. He brought his own touch, his own bright, bold color palette, as well as just very intriguing silhouettes. While I don't think this collection was as bold as some of the Bottega greens, what we're seeing here is he's playing with prints a lot more, a slightly more muted color palette, but there were definitely bold, unexpected pops. The muted trench coats one moment and then like a bright floral print. Maybe it was just the way the coats were swung over the bodies. And I feel like there are a little bit of references with some of the work that he did at Bottega, the chain pouch, the chain cassette, the low slung waist, just something we're seeing all across fashion. When it came to the shoes, Daniel Lee seems to really like his mules. We're seeing these kind of strappy knot sandals, the snake skin print on shoes. I found it kind of hard to see the bags, but they have this long strap that dangles down that I think will be kind of a signifier of this new Burberry bag. What really stood out to me, just from a consumer perspective, I really just like the coats. I thought the deconstructed coats were interesting. To me, whenever I think of trench coat, I think of that kind of like neutral beige color. There was this olivey color. It looked like in the light, it kind of had a purple sheen to it, but it was also just so wearable. The way that the models were styling these coats, half wearing their coats, the way it's like draped to expose the arms. I feel like we're gonna see a lot of influencers pose like that. People just know it's a Burberry trench because people are wearing it like that. And I was reading some really interesting interviews with him and he's talked about how he's very interested in looking at singular objects as opposed to creating total looks. The impact that like a shoe can have or like a handbag. When you think about the Bottega square toe sandals, you could be wearing just a rib dress, but having those very aggressively square sandals made a lot of impact on that outfit. It'll be interesting to see whether or not these shoes and these handbags really have that same impact the way it did at Bottega. And he said this in the business of fashion, how he wants to bring production back to the UK. He stated this, I think there's definitely a return to that. The brand has a responsibility to preserve craftsmanship, to use fabrics made in the UK. In Christopher's time, there was a lot of innovation in the company's mill in Yorkshire. Then in more recent years, it was more of the core carry over offer of trench coats. They were in the store, but not really in the image or the show. So it's been really nice to engage with people in Yorkshire again to make 
make pieces for the show and to develop fabrics. This is just a designer I'm personally interested in following. I hope he really does bring new life into Burberry. I think there's a lot of potential here. I really like the exploration of the trench, but I'm also curious to see these accessories. That is my video and I would love to know, was there anything about these recent fashion weeks, fashion collections, fashion shows that you've seen that excited you about fashion for 2024? I would love to know. Thank you so much for joining me and another one and I hope to see you in the next one.